So I was recently searching around YouTube and I couldn't find any good tutorials on how to teach anyone on using Roblox Studio for the very first time or kind of just getting used to using some of the Roblox Studio's cool features that they have like building instead of just using the toolbox all the time and putting in models from the toolbox. So for the purpose of this video and the purpose of just showing you how everything works in Roblox Studio, I cleared all of the windows that were showing up on here before. So the first thing first I want to talk about is beta features. Now, obviously in beta features, you're going to have, these are going to be features for you to use like aerodynamics, assistant preview, all of these new cool features that Roblox Studio is adding, that Roblox is adding like video uploads, updated Roblox controls, UI list layout, texture generator, all of these are basically beta features and you can opt into these beta features or you can opt out to certain beta features. Now obviously a lot of the beta features are very nice for you to use so I won't say that you should opt out of them but if you want to figure out which ones you want to opt in or opt out of you can go to the Roblox dev form because that's going to be the best place on learning a lot of things Roblox Studio. So now we're going to talk about each tab. So over here in the home tab is where we have basically everything in Roblox Studio to, for our home tab, like play and game settings and the rest of the stuff you're going to find in the model tab when you're working with different models. So in team test, if you're working on a collaborative game, which up here you can see collaborate and you can just add people to that same workspace and you can work in the same game together. So that's where the team test is going to be because we're not collaborating on this game we're not going to be utilizing team test at all. So in the model tab, this is where we have our select, move, scale, rotate, and transform. Basically everything that was on the home tab is also here, but here we have rotate, move, snap to parts. We have an align tool. We have different pivots. Um, we can insert parts, change the color, change the material, generate textures, um, anchor it, lock that part, group that part, union it, have it be intersecting something. Um, negate a part and separate two parts. Over here we have different constraints where you can create different constraints and welds. Over here we have gameplay which is our spawn point and our effects and then here's where we have objects, models, and all these advanced stuff that just kind of pertain to like scripting so we're not going to look at the advanced stuff. Over here in avatar is where you can import a rig and edit animation. So obviously for this purposes, I'm going to insert a rig. Now this rig will help me d basically scale parts. If I'm going to be doing stuff that is going to be based on a game is you want to make sure every single part can be seen and is in a good proportions to a Roblox avatar. So obviously the rig is going to be needed when you are building in Roblox studio. Next up is the test tab. And obviously this is just where you're going to test different stuff. Now this is where you can, if you're working with UI, you can click on this device and you can just change your devices and to fit to window, uh, actually make it fit to your window. So that way you can actually see all of it. So that's where that's going to be. It's going to emulate that. I don't know what emulate player is. Oh, it's just going to do player test profile. I've never actually used that. So we don't need to do that. So this is where you can mute the audio in game when you're testing it or you can have it unmuted. So obviously we don't use this tab a lot, but you can use it. So I don't use it. If you're not working on a game that you want to like actually test, you don't really need this. Now in the view tab, this is where you can open up almost every single item that you want to have. So your explorer, your, explorer, your properties, your toolbox, your output, your command bar, all of these are going to be right here in the view tab. So. We're going to open up Explorer, we're going to open up Properties. I'm going to explain to you what Explorer does. Basically, Explorer is everything that you see in this world, like the rig and the base plate. Those are everything that you see in this world. And you can change up the lighting, you can change up the material service. I have used 2022 materials off. If you have it on, you're going to have all the new materials that Roblox has. So definitely check that off if you want to use all the legacy materials, like ones that you see in really old games. Now I'm going to, I'm going to show you if I insert a part. So in the material service, if I go into the material service, I'm going to check on use 2022 materials. And I'm just going to use the wood texture since that's going to be something that we can see a significant change. So over here is the wood texture. 
using the 2022 materials. But if we go into material service and we check that off, it's going to use the legacy wood material. So definitely we want to use legacy textures because um, I think those look better than the 2022 textures. And the properties tab, you got you actually got to see that in action. The properties tab just changed the part. And it's also something that helps with scripting. So if you're looking at different scripts and stuff, you're going to want to work with the properties tab. So the properties tab is going to be our best friend when working in Roblox Studio. So these are the two main things that you want to have open, the Explorer and the properties, because these are going to be the main things that you work on when you're building and when you're scripting. So everything that goes into this game is going to be with the Explorer. And everything that is in the game, we're going to have certain properties. So the properties tab is going to be where you want to have everything. So now the next thing that we can open up is the toolbox. And the toolbox, if you know what the toolbox is, and you already know what it is, obviously this is where you can insert different models into the game um, that you're using, like different builds and stuff. But one of the things that people really don't know is that you have your own inventory where you can see your different models um your different plugins that you have like plugins that you bought your audio that you created um your images that you have uploaded um your meshes different packages that you have uploaded um your animations that you made and different videos that you will have uploaded and then different fonts you have like the the no sphere font is something that i had added myself so then yeah so we're not going to work with the toolbox in this to tr in this time so we're not going to use toolbox you can remove the toolbox but if you want to use the toolbox you can definitely use the toolbox that is something i also have open like almost all the time in case i need something in the toolbox so the toolbox will also be your kind of like best friend now over here we have the plugins tab and basically this is where you can find all your plugins and I'm going to tell you some of the plugins that I feel is very very useful when you're using Roblox Studio. So over here we definitely have gap fill. Now gap fill will just basically fill any single gaps that you have in your parts. So let's say you want to create like a bend and you don't really want to like try to like work with the part to create that bend you can create this will create the bend for you and just fill that gap now building tools f3x um that's something like people are like oh yeah you would want to use that but it's not something i use all the time so i don't normally use that now this this thing with the compass this is basically gonna help you create rounded parts so like if you want to have like different curves you can definitely use that without using like the gap fill tool like if you want to create like like a nice like round circle your compass tool is going to help you with that now rig edit is if you're creating custom characters obviously we're not going to be using anything with that brush tool brush tool is just going to take a part and you can brush it around that's something i use when i'm creating different scenes so if you want to have brush tool definitely Grab brush tool, 3D text. I think the name kind of just tells you what it is already. It is going to be your creating 3D text. This is a plugin I use a lot, so definitely go ahead and get this one as well. So part to terrain, um, it's basically going to take this part, like the base plate, and going to change it to like water, grass, sandstone, brick, whatever mm -hmm. terrain it is. It's just going to change that part to the terrain. So if you have like an entire map that has been built out of parts and you want to just change it all to terrain you can just use this part to terrain tool and it's going to change everything to terrain so next up is moon animator now this is just for animating ui gradient it's working with uis um auto scale light also working with uis icon creator also working with uis asset tools um that is just for me to create my UGC items on my avatar scene tools scene tools is actually a new one so you can do like badge giver conveyor hover kill light flicker like pulse do different stuff um Road builder has a video on scene tools that you can go ahead and check out and legacy animations this is just me using that for my thumbnails 
All right, so now I basically went through everything on Roblox Studio and all of the plugins I have, just so you know which ones you would want to have and which ones you wouldn't want to have. So we're gonna head over to the model tab and we're gonna go over here to part and we're gonna insert a part. Now this part right here is gonna be our best friend because it's gonna be the part that we work on the most. Now obviously in this part tab, you can insert a block, insert a spear, insert a wedge, insert a corner wedge and insert a cylinder. Now each of these parts that you use, they're not gonna be anchored by default. So I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't anchor a part, just so you know exactly what happens. So you know like, oh, if I'm testing a game, this happens, I need to anchor this part. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create a counter. Um, so I'm gonna make this be at a good scale to where this part would be because obviously the rig is going to help me scale these parts and this is something that i have recently learned like two years ago to use like a rig to scale my parts so that way they're like at like a good length for a roblox character so that is something that the tutorials do not teach you is to use a rig to kind of like scale the part so you can see if they're at like a good length now, obviously right here we have collisions we're going to check the collision on and basically what that would do is it would just bring this part above that one part so that way we don't have to like have collisions off and just move it like that so if we have collisions off basically what that would happen what that would do is we would just have to judge where the part is and kind of do that but thankfully now that we have snap to parts on that's just going to snap it to part but if we don't have snap to parts we would have to like kind of like judge if it's going to be there so definitely we want to use the collisions tool so when you're done using the collisions tool check that off so that way you don't have it like that so now i'm going to use the properties tab and i'm going to change the color and the material of each of these objects so that way we know exactly where so what each of these objects are All right, so now that each of these objects are done, we're gonna go ahead in the model tab and we're gonna insert a spawn point so that way when we test the game, we can see exactly what happens with each of these parts. So now that we're testing the game, we're gonna go over here and as you can see, we can kind of drag this part. Now, usually what would happen when you have like two different items, I'm gonna show you right now. If you have these two items and you scale these up, you kind of just like create like two different things like this. You have like this kind of like one structure up there, another structure floating, that part is just gonna fall down and you can kind of see it fall down. So basically what you would want to do next is you just wanna hit, take all of your parts in the game and you can hit anchor. And this will basically anchor all the parts. So as you can see, that part is still floating and you will not be able to just move this part around. So definitely anchor all your parts as you're working with them. So that way you can have different parts and they be exactly where you want them to be. Okay, so now one of the things that I do want to talk about is when you are using Roblox Studio and you want to move a certain part, like scale a different part on like a certain scale. So over here in snapping, we definitely have this move thing and it's been checked on. So if we set it to 10 studs, we can definitely see that it's moving by 10 studs. But if we check that off, it's moving by free reign and we can move it exactly how we want it. So that way, it just free reign and it's like kind of like on a small grid. So think of this as your grid. The move, the move tool will basically move items based on that certain stud. So it's gonna enter so the basically the tools are gonna interact with the properties and move this each time with 10 studs. And the same with rotate. The same with rotate. If we go to the use the rotate tool, the rotate tool will basically say, oh, we're gonna rotate this part by 90 degrees. So that's how it's going to happen. That's how it's going to be or give you free reign to just rotate this item as much as you would like.
So that's pretty much everything that Roblox Studio will do, and that's exactly how you can build different things within Roblox Studio, is by using all of these tips. Now obviously, this doesn't give you any like building tips, because definitely you will want to like have kind of like an idea of what you want to build, and you want to just kind of recreate that by using these parts, and obviously using a lot of parts is going to be very performance heavy, so you would want to work with other objects like meshes that you can create in Blender and kind of just make 3D models. So obviously that is everything you need to know about Roblox Studio and everything that Roblox Studio does when it interacts with you. I'm going to leave all my socials down in the description, like my Discord server and my Twitter. You can definitely go ahead and check those out. And also, if this had really helped you and you want to see more content, definitely hit the subscribe button. I don't always do Roblox video content. I do a lot more Bloxburg content. Well, definitely, if that's something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button. If you want to see more um, Roblox video content, let me know, and I'll do more Roblox video content whenever I get time to just get into Roblox video and teach you things. So I'm thinking about starting up my beginner scripting tutorials again and then starting up the how to script a cafe series once again just showing you more stuff about that since i have a little bit more downtime that i can kind of just show you some more stuff